Podcast. I'm going to walk you through the process of outputting color separations from a design we created in Graphics Flow in Adobe Illustrator. So this is a design I previously customized. I changed the text. I went in and changed the color scheme. What I'm going to do is go over to the little ellipse button here and select that. And for Adobe Illustrator, we want to download a PDF file. This is going to download a vector file. The weathered overlay is going to be incorporated into the file. The text in that file is going to be converted to curves, but we can still do a lot of editing in Illustrator if we choose to. So I'm just going to click on download PDF, and then I'll select a location on my hard drive where the file is going to go. In Adobe Illustrator, I'm going to go to the file menu. I'm going to select open. I'm going to navigate to the PDF file that I downloaded. I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to click on open. Once the file opens, I'm going to grab my artboard tool, select the image, center at my page, and then I'm going to zoom in a little bit. To change the artboard size to match your film, you can have the artboard tool selected. Go to the artboards tab, select the little icon where it says custom. I'm going to go down here and select letter and I'm going to click OK. Now you'll notice I have my separations preview tab open here. If you go to window, you have all your little tabs that you can open. I have separations preview selected, and you'll notice that there's nothing showing up in the preview. And the reason for that is we're in a color mode currently that's RGB. So we need to change that to a CMYK color mode. So I'm going to go to file. I'm going to go to color mode. I'm going to select CMYK. And now you can see the colors in the design. Now you'll notice the gold is not showing up. And the reason the gold is not showing up is that gold color is actually not a Pantone spot color or any kind of spot color. So in order to print color separations, all of the colors in our design have to be designated as spot colors. So I'm going to go over here to swatches just so I can kind of see what's going on. And we're going to recolor this entire design into spot colors. Now, before I do that, You'll notice there's a weathered overlay on the file. I'm going to select that overlay so you can see what's going on. That's a bitmap that's sitting directly over the file. Just to ease the editing process, I'm going to go over to layers and I'm going to select that overlay and I'm just going to turn it off. We're just going to hide it for now. So in order to recolor the design, the first thing I want to do is select the entire design. So I'm going to click on control A to select it. Then I'm going to go over here to the edit function. I'm going to click on edit colors and I'm gonna click on recolor artwork. I'm gonna drag this up a little bit and you'll notice there's advanced options. So I'm gonna click on advanced options and you're gonna see a little button right here and this limits the color groups. So I'm gonna click on that. And this is where we're gonna select the color palette that we're going to use. Now, if you're using Pantone spot colors and you've subscribed to Pantone in Adobe Illustrator and you have access to those colors, what you're going to do is you're going to go over here to color books and you're going to select your Pantone solid coated color palette. If you're not using Pantone, um, I would recommend downloading the free tone simulated Pantone colors. It's the same colors in the Pantone solid coated chart. They're just renamed to generic colors. They have the exact same RGB values and they also are set to spot colors. So you could certainly use the free tone if you do not subscribe to the Pantone colors. So once we've got our selection here and I've selected the Pantone colors, I'm going to click on OK, and you'll notice these Pantone colors are now showing up under my color swatches. Now, something very important, you're going to see this little triangle of white right here in the corner of that color. This is telling me that this color is a global color. Global colors allow me to very easily recolor a design. If you don't see that little triangle there, what you need to do is select the color, and then you come down here, you go to Swatch Options, and you just want to check on global. And here's why you want to do that, because now it's very easy for me to recolor this design. All I would do is just go over here to my color palette of my choice. In this case, I'm going to select orange. You'll notice the orange is going to show up under my swatches. I'm going to click on orange first because I'm going to merge the gold into this orange. So I'm going to click on that first. I'm going to hold down my control key and we're going to select the gold. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on merge swatches. And now I just recolored that gold into orange. So once we have it recolored, now we have the ability to go in and do other types of advanced editing. If you wanted to move objects around, maybe you wanted to weld some text together, add a stroke, you have complete editing level control over all of the vectors in this file. So next I'm going to turn the weathered overlay back on. So I'm going to go to layers. I'm going to turn it back on. 
and you can see the weathered overlay. And this overlay is actually in white. So I'm going to move it over to the side on the artboard here so you can kind of see what color it is. So the one thing I want to do is I want to mask off the overlay so it actually punches through the graphic. This would be really handy if I was doing, say, a direct-to-film or DTG print where I wanted the overlay to knock through because I could just save that as a PNG file. I have a print-ready file with the overlay knocked through. Now, for color separations, we do have to make a decision here because the overlay is currently white, and we did have white in the graphic. And so for printing separations out, if we turned off that white separation, that's also going to knock the white through. What we're going to do in this particular graphic is we're going to use an overlay, but we're actually going to print the white. And you notice when I converted the colors over, the white came into a pale gray. I'm going to leave it as a pale gray because it's going to be easy for me to preview the separations if that's actually a color. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mask off the overlay. So what I want to do is select the entire image, I'm going to go over here to transparency and then I'm going to select make mask. I'm going to uncheck clip and then I'm going to click on invert mask. And so that we can see that it's actually knocking through, I'm actually going to go in and change the color of my artboard. So we're going to go over here to file. I'm going to go to document setup. I'm going to change the artboard color to gray and click on OK. I'm going to click on simulate colored paper. And I'm going to click on Edit Artboards. And so you can clearly see that this is knocked through. So our file's ready to go. We can preview the color separations by just going over here to Separations. I'm going to click on Overprint Preview. I'm going to make sure Show You Spot Colors Only is selected. I'm going to turn off CMYK. And now we can clearly see the spot colors in the design. The transparent white is the overlay that's already been knocked through. Um, I can turn off these separations so you can actually see the separations on screen. And so one of the reasons I'm using a color other than white for the white ink is just so I can clearly see the separations. So once we're ready to output, go to File, Print, and then choose our separation options. When the Print dialog opens up, I'm going to highlight Output. And here's where I need to select a printer. So in order to output color separations, I'm going to need a printer that has a PPD file. So you'll notice right here, this is my generic Nitro PDF creator driver. And I have a variety of printers right here. I have a, my home printer, which is this office jet. Notice I don't have a PPD file. And so it's not giving me the options to select separations. So I'm just going to use a generic PostScript driver here. And I'm going to select that. And under PPD, I'm going to select PDF 9. Um, PPD. This is just a generic driver. And so you'll notice once that PPD is selected, I get the options for color separations. And you notice it says composite, and then it also says separations host-based, and then in-rip separations. In-rip separations means that your separation software is going to create the separation. So you're actually going to output a color-separated composite image the RIP software, when you open up that image, it will actually separate onto separate pages. If you're going to let your computer do the separation and you're just going to output to separate pages for every color in the design, just click on separations host based and you'll get solid black imprints for the film positives for each color in your design. You're also going to notice the option for positive. We want that selected. Emulsion up right reading. We want that selected. And then you'll also notice all of your postscript data here for halftones. So if you have any halftones in your design, this is where you'd go and change the dot frequency and angle and LPI for your halftones. You'll see that the separations that are going to output are going to be this Pantone color here, the 5463, the 663 that we're using for white and then the orange 021. We're not outputting the separation for the weathered overlay because we've actually knocked that through the design. So that will be knocked through each color separation as we output. Now, if you have a print driver selected, you'll be able to go to the setup functions here to set up any kind of settings that you want for that film output. Make sure that your print page matches the artboard size within Adobe Illustrator. And when you're ready to print, you can either select print through the setup or you'll have a print function here. In this case, I'm just creating a PostScript file and I would just click on save. So this is the basic process for creating and outputting color separations in Adobe Illustrator. It's pretty straightforward, but there are some nuances, and I hope you picked up some of those little tips and tricks along the way as we went through this sample project.